Hey everybody, this is Vanessa Green with OKC Face Painter. Today we are talking about uh, positive and negative stencils, uh, or should I say positive and negative spaces, because, yeah. Anyway, so this is what would be considered a negative stencil, because you go around it and then the center is empty instead of just filling it directly in. But, as you can see, there are several positive spaces in it to give it detail. Um, but I'm going to show you how to give it more detail. Today I'm using my Dual Action Airbrush by Master Airbrush. Yeah, it's not great, but that's okay because I'm cheap. And this is Olive Branch uh, Quick Dry paint that I'm using. Again, because I'm cheap and I use this for practice or for making my menus and sometimes on people. I just prefer Pro Air. So. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. I had done another video, and then my camera decided it was just going to quit on me. And it might do it again, so we will see what happens. The downside to these stencils is you have to walk them, which means you have to make sure that they don't move. So you have to constantly, you know, realign it or move it around. It's kind of a pain. All right, so I'm going to show you how to add a little bit more detail with the stencil you have rather than having to pick up special tools. So I'm going to add a little bit of shade work right here for his gun barrel. I'm doing the other side too. Okay, see? Look at how that stands out. And then we're going to separate the sight right there. And I'm going to use this right here. Ah, see? See how much detail that gives? Okay, then his fingers are kind of like not quite very detailed, so I'm going to go ahead and use his head ha, 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 to give it detail. Now, this is not a necessary step. None of these are necessary. This is if you really want to make it look phenomenal. It takes a lot of time, but like it's pretty darn awesome if you can pull it off. So, notice his fingers are all nice and separated now. And I'm going to add a little more detail right here and right there. See? Yep. So we're going to use his head a lot probably because every time I have a curved edge. So we're going to separate there and here. You don't need much. Look at that. See what that did? All right, now we're going to go here. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, there, look at that, okay, and here, yeah, see, makes a big difference, doesn't it? We're going to go down here, we're going to separate these two spaces, like that, and then I'm going to add a drop shadow right there, see that? All right, now we're going to do it over here. See, with these, you can make it look like it's 3D if you really want to. We're going to go up here to sort of the shoulder kind of area, separate that line. By the way, if you want to know where this came from, this is a, oh, what is it, bio art stencil, I believe. They call themselves clandestine stencils, I think, now, so I don't know which one you'll find it under, but if you get a hold of Angie Bio Art, she will hook you up. It's a great series. All right, I'm going to use more of a straight edge here. That was a little too straight. So we're going to add some shade work to soften that up. Right here, I kind of want to add a little detail to the gun barrel again. So that helps there. We're going to go around again here. There. Let's see. And here. Right there. There. And all that sticks out so much better now, as you can see. So over here, I'm going to use the gun barrel, because as you can see, this is kind of a rounded area over here, so I'm going to kind of do that. See? Look at that. Cool, huh? All right, now we're going to use another straight edge for this. And we're just going to... do that. 
And I'm going to do a free line here. And I'm going to separate this. Now, you've got all these cool shapes on here, so why not add a cool shape? Look at that. That's cool. All right. Now we're going to go back to his head. <laughs> I told you I was going to use his head a lot. Right here. All right. And over here. See, you need all these lines to connect the stencil. It's very important because otherwise it wouldn't work. So you've got to kind of fill in those lines, you know? And that's what makes that sort of 3D effect. It separates everything. Oh, I didn't need to do that. All right, we're just going to soften that up. And we're going to do this. See, you can correct your mistakes. Isn't it great? Put shadows anywhere you think there might be a shadow, like up here on his forehead. Right there. Right here in this sort of cheek area, maybe. And you see how much more detailed that is now than it was. A lot better, right? Okay, so now we're going to add other things. I'm going to have this guy, let me see, let's do him, do him here? No. Nah. Let's do him up here. I'll show you why in a minute. So again, this is what they kind of consider negative even though there's positive spaces in here. And you want to get close to him, but not actually touching him. And there's me walking the stencil. I had to move my hand. So since you do have plenty of um, control with this, it's easy to get close and not have to worry about it. And then we're gonna kinda fill that in to make a little bit more shadow play. Probably up here too. There we go. Now, right here I'm going to write, not this whole thing. That's another great thing about stencils. You don't have to do the whole thing. So I'm going to mask it with my thumb. And yes, I never use gloves. It's a terrible thing. I'll tell you, there's two reasons. I like to feel my stencils, but also I'm kind of like a little a bit of a hippie. So I would rather just clean up my hand rather than, um, you know, use a bunch of gloves, especially after COVID. I just hated seeing all that waste. It was just awful. Okay, so we are going to go over here. And this is a hold on, Jim Holtz collection right there. Super Stamper. Yeah, it's like just a regular craft stencil, but I love it. I think it's wicked cool. I use it a lot. So it gives kind of like a gritty outline, which I love, and let's just go ahead and kind of bring it down here too, so it looks like it's continuing. See? This is the way. Um, oh, and this stencil, I don't know where that came from. This is why it frustrates me when stencil makers do not mark their stencils. I'm sure you can find something similar anywhere. All right, so down here. I was practicing this, so we were not going to worry about that. But here is a, an actual negative space part of the stencil. When you're just... Or no, this is... Sorry, this is, this is positive. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so this is a fully positive stencil. Oh, see, it's confusing for me, even. Now we're going to do this. And since we have the control, we're going to do this thing where you can just ride the edge and then you have like this sort of shadowing effect. Oh, hey. Sorry. I forgot his mouth and his chin. And his eyes are already messed up, but that was because I already had that thing there. But you get the basic idea. So now... We're going to continue this sort of look down here. Just so it has kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say symbiotic, but that's not right. It just looks good. We're going to leave it at that. So, there you go. For positive and negative, you kind of see where that's going. outlining 
versus filling in and you got to see how to add details that's really important so I hope you enjoyed that guys talk to you later have a great day bye